What's up guys, Gavin Wong here, and today I have another tutorial for you guys. So I think it was like two months ago, I performed on Spidey's live stream, and I said in the comments that if I hit 100 subscribers, I would post a tutorial for one of the tricks that I did on Spidey's live stream. Well, I hit uh, 100 subscribers like two or three weeks ago, um, and I just I hadn't had time to do the video. Um, I had tons of things going on. Um, about four weeks ago, I had surgery on my shoulder to repair a torn labrum, so I was in a sling for like four weeks for that, and then right after, right as I was getting out of that sling, um, I had to move into my new house, so you know, had all my stuff packed up, didn't get a chance to do the video, um, I finally moved in now, um, and then have all my stuff unpacked, so finally have time to do the video, you guys will notice that the background's different, um, if you look at my old videos, you'll see that I was in the living room of my apartment back then, and now in the new house, everything's unpacked, so now I finally have time to make the video for you guys. Uh, wouldn't be able to do this without you guys, so thanks for you know letting me get to 100 subscribers. If you guys like my content, please make sure you subscribe and like. It means so much to me. Definitely appreciate it. Um, with that said, let's take a look at the performance video of the reversed card. All right, so TR, we'll take your card and we'll put it somewhere here in the middle of the deck. Okay. And I want you to see that's really going into the middle of the deck. Okay, you see that? TR, mm -hmm. nine of hearts, yeah? Yeah. And I want you to, be able to see all the cards above your card and all the cards below it in the middle of the deck. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to push that all the way in. All right, and then we'll give it a nice couple of shuffles just to make sure it's, you know, really lost. Mm -hmm. All right. And I want you to see that uh, your card isn't on top of the deck, right? That's not your card. No. And then your card is not on the bottom of the deck. No. Right? So it's not on top. It's not on the bottom. Therefore, your card must be lost somewhere truly in the middle of the deck. Yeah. Is it fair to say that? Mm-hmm. Now, most magicians at this point, they're going to do something funny or do something and find your card, right? Yeah. But if I had real magical powers, I wouldn't have to go through and find your card. I could actually yeah. make your card reveal itself to me. Okay. Right. So if I just focus and I snap just like that, hopefully your card will reveal itself to me. Okay. And you can see that there is now one card face up in the whole deck. And that is your nine of hearts. Oh my God, that is actually crazy. <laughs> So that's the performance video, guys. I will also leave a link above to my actual performance on Spidey's live stream. One thing you guys will notice is that the performance that I did on Spidey's live stream has different patter, uh, different presentation than you know what was done in the performance video and what I normally do when I perform this trick. And that's mainly because um, there's a lot of magicians that watch Spidey's live stream and a lot of people that are you know learning magic. And so I decided to change the presentation and the patter to cater uh, to that audience, knowing that there's going to be a lot of magicians watching. So in today's tutorial, I'm actually going to use the pattern that I use when I normally perform this trick to, to regular people, uh, to non-magicians. Um, so that's why you know, you'll notice that the pattern and the presentation is different here than in Spidey's live stream. So my handling on this trick is something that I actually came up with on my own. I had watched a video um, in a tutorial where a guy you know, does the same effect, but then he uses a double backer to achieve this effect. And I really like the effect, but I didn't like the fact that you have to use a double backer or you know, any gaff cards, any gimmick cards, things like that. I wanted to be able to just pick up a deck of cards, even a borrowed deck of cards, and perform this trick impromptu. And so this is the handling that I came up with to be able to perform that. And so I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. Let's go. All right, guys. So this is the tutorial video for the reversed card. I am trying something kind of new here. So this is a new camera angle. It's going to be a kind of an over the shoulder kind of view um, just to help you guys learn the trick. Um, you know, I'm trying to simulate what it would look like from your angle when you guys are performing. So hopefully this helps. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think of this camera angle. And then for the tutorial, I will be using my Green Monarchs deck. This is made by Theory11. And I have to say, this is probably one of my favorite deck boxes of all time. If you guys can see that, it's a nice dark green color on the box. And it has this really nice gold uh, foil on the outside that just goes all the way around the box. Um, it has this nice texture to it as well. So definitely check that out. This is the Green Monarchs deck by Theory11. So now for the tutorial, this is an impromptu trick. This requires no setup at all whatsoever. It can even be done with the borrowed deck. And so you can just have your spectator pick out any card at all. So let's pick out a random card here and let's say they pick the king of spades, all right? 
So now this card can be signed if you want. Uh, there's no duplicates whatsoever. And then what you have to do is you have to control the card up to the top of the deck, All right? So they can return it back to the deck any way you wish and then just simply control it to the top of the deck. So let's just say, you know, you have them put their card here in the middle. I'm gonna hold a pinky break there. And then let's say I just do some cuts to lose their card, lose their card into the middle of the deck. And then, you know, what I've really done is just control it to the top, right? So you're gonna control the card to the top and then now you're gonna do a double lift, all right? So my go-to double lift is just a strike double. And so you're gonna do a double lift and you're gonna say, so just to make sure your card isn't on the top, correct? And they're gonna say no, right? And then you wanna be careful here, you don't wanna spread because again, we have that double, their card is now face up on the bottom of that second card from the top. So again, control the card to the top. And then from here, you're gonna do a double. You're gonna say, just to make sure your card isn't at the top. Is that correct? And then they're gonna say no. And then from here, you're gonna peel off just the one card, just the one face up card. And then you're gonna do a wrist kill to hide the fact that their selected card is second from the top. All right, so you're gonna peel off just this top card and then you do a wrist kill by just tilting your left hand down, okay? And so you don't want this to be some sort of quick, jerky, you know, suspicious movement, like don't do it super fast and suspicious, just be casual, be natural. Your left hand literally does all the work as it turns the deck over. And so you're gonna say, the top card, your, your card is not on top, correct? They're gonna say no, and that's when you peel off just that top card, do your wrist kill, and hide the fact that their card is face up on top of the deck now, right? So I have the card here, peel off, wrist kill, and say, and your card is not on the bottom, correct? And they're gonna say no. And say, Great, and then now you take their card and put that back face down. This is going fit because the deck is flipped over now. This is gonna go back in the regular orientation on top of the deck. And you're gonna say, great. So your card isn't on top and your card isn't on the bottom, right? And then now you're gonna square this up and you're gonna spread, but you don't wanna start spreading right away because their card is now face up second from the top, right? So after you turn the deck over, after you square up, you say your card isn't on top, your card isn't on the bottom, square that top card up, you're gonna turn over, and now you are going to block push this top block over and then spread and say your card must be lost somewhere in the middle of the deck. Okay, so when you're doing this, you wanna be very careful with your right hand and make sure, you know, as you're holding this and clamping down with your right hand, there's not too much movement with your right thumb because if you move this card too much, you're gonna flash, flash and show that, you know, their card is face up second from the top. So again, from here, when the deck is turned over, you're gonna just block push over, spread and say, so your card is lost somewhere in the middle. And then at this point, I'll just go somewhere into the middle of the deck and then I'll flip both hands over and just, you know, show as an ad convincer that, you know, all the cards are still facing one way. Obviously you don't say that because they're not gonna see the, you know, the, the punchline and the, the trick coming, but you're just casually just kind of spreading to the middle, you know, separate in the middle and just turn both hands over and say, your card is lost somewhere in the middle of the deck, all right? And as you're doing this, again, you wanna be very careful with your right hand because you don't wanna move your th thumb too much. You don't wanna flash that. So just make sure you're just clamping down and all you're doing is just turning your hand over and then at the same time, you also want to make sure your hands go far apart. Okay, so you don't want this, you don't want to keep your hands too close together and show them like this, because what's going to happen is when you're putting the cards back together and you square up, you're actually going to secretly cut the cards. So if you remember, we spread the cards this way. So the top half is in our right hand and the bottom half is in our left hand. When you, after you spread and show both sides, you're going to secretly cut the cards and you're going to square up by putting the left half on top of the right half, all right? And so if you spread your hands far apart as you're showing the cards here, it helps kind of hide the fact that you're cutting the cards and you're not placing them back exactly where they were when you spread the cards, all right? So it's important that you, you know, hold your hands kind of far apart. If you want, you can either, you know, rotate around, show the audience, you know, show everybody that, you know, it's fair. And then as you come together, that's when you will secretly cut the cards, place the bottom, what was the bottom half now on top, the top half now goes on the bottom, and then just square everything up.
all right? And in doing that, what you've effectively done is you've cut the cards. Their face-up card was second from the top, right? And in that process, we've just cut their card somewhere into the middle of the deck. So then now it's at this point, after all the dirty work is done, I'll just kind of stop and wait. And I say, you know, if I wanted to, I can go through and find your deck in some spectacular fashion. But instead, I can actually just make your card reveal itself to me. And so all it takes is a snap of the fingers, and just like that, and then from here, I'll just you know flip the deck over, overhand, just like that, it's super casual, you know, nothing fishy about that. And then I, you know, their card has revealed itself to me, and now I can just casually spread. And now they'll see that there's only one face-down card out of the deck. And then you ask them what their card was, they'll say, you know, the king of spades, and then you turn that over, and that can be their signed card as the only reversed card in the deck. Right, so it's basically the trick. It's a pretty simple premise, but pretty cool effect. Um, one thing I do want to point out is, you know, once you're here, you've cut the deck and you square everything back together. If you wanted to, you could just from here spread, right? And then that's their card will be the only one that's face up. But I think there's a little bit more of a buildup. If you turn the deck over, you spread, and then they can see for themselves that there's only one face down card, right? And then there's kind of that that aha moment. And then that, I think for me, that hits a little bit harder when there's, they see the one card face down, you ask them what their card was, and then you're able to turn that over and show them that that is their card that was face down, facing the other way from all the other cards. All right. Um, and then if you guys are a little bit more advanced, there's a different handling for this as well. So when you're back in this position and, you're, and their selected card is second from the top after you guys have already done the double lift and you've placed you know, the top card back facing the right way, because you're going to turn the deck over anyways as you flip it over face up before you spread, um, instead of you know, doing the part where you spread and you secretly cut the cards here, instead of doing that, because you're going to flip the cards over anyways, you could just do a turnover pass here. So you, know, you could spread and say, your card must be lost somewhere in the middle, right? And then you place the cards back you know, the way they were, so nothing funny going on there yet. And then if you want, as you turn the cards over, you know, just do a turnover pass, right? And that effectively cuts the cards kind of invisibly, uh, depending on how good your turnover pass is. Mine, mine isn't that great. Um, and it's, you know, it's covered from the top, but effectively you can see that it has the same effect. We've now cut the cards secretly without them knowing, and their card is the only one that's, you know, facing the other way from the others, All right? So that's an option as well. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that. That's just, that's an option. I don't, again, I don't have a great turnover pass, which is why I choose not to do that option. I just find it, you know, more natural, more casual, just very simple and easy. If you just simply from this position where you have the card second from the top, you just block push over, you spread, you say your card must be lost somewhere in the middle, right? You can fairly show both sides and then make sure your hands are far apart. And then as you come together, you square up, you just casually cut the deck and just replace it like this and square up. All right, nobody's, you know, the wiser, nobody sees that move. It's very casual, nonchalant. And then just like that, their card is the only one that's face up in the whole deck, okay? And so, so yeah, that's it. That's the reverse card, uh, you know, not very difficult to do. The only thing you need to do really is just have a good double lift after you've controlled the card to the top. And from there, it's very simple, uh, pretty powerful effect. And there you go, that's the reversed card. All right, guys, so that's the tutorial of my version of the reversed card. Hope you guys liked it. Um, if you did, please like and subscribe. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.